sometimes I find old prototypes and it's almost fun trying to reverse engineer them because, uh, you know, it, it was so long ago. This one was uh, 1996. And it was the Feromatic. It was a ghost train and a fun house or horror house type control system. That was a prototype. I never actually ended up manufacturing these. Um, the unit was designed to be tripped by an external sensor, like a pass and fred sensor or a switch or something like that. And it could control two relays for effects and also had a ISD speech storage chip on it. Now, the ISD chips are very interesting. They're no longer relevant, really, in the sense that we now have, like, MB3 player modules. But um, in the olden days, we had these ISD information storage device chips, which stored speech and sound with sort of tape quality. And they did so by using what's called, well, what they described as analog memory. And basically speaking, it, it sampled the sound as you recorded it in on the chip. And the chip can actually record itself. It, it has the facility to take the audio input. And it stores, instead of just storing it as ones and zeros, it, it stores it as analog voltage levels within that memory. I'm not quite sure how that works. But it meant that the sound was pretty darn good. It also has a balanced output driver, I'm pretty sure. Not 100% sure. Yeah, I think it has. It does. It can drive a transformer. So there was obviously, uh, I think there's been an audio transformer here, an isolation transformer that has been removed, and that output was from the audio uh, transformer to go into a line-in system. But it also had this amplifier here. So starting at the beginning, the power comes in here, goes through a bridge rectifier and a fuse, I'd use a PTC thermistor these days. Then it goes to this smoothing capacitor. And it gets divided at that point. It goes to a, a 7812 voltage regulator over here, which puts a 12 volt supply out on this connector, but also that's to power external sensors and things like that. But that also has a switch trigger input. Uh, via this resistor to the microcontroller, which would go in this socket here. It was a PIC microcontroller, probably a PIC 56, PIC C56 back then. Um, now let's see, the 5 volt, there's a 5 volt regulator down here for the microcontroller and the audio chip. Um, but it comes straight from the rectifier uh, and the smoothing. Okay, that's reasonable enough. Um, the processor has these switches and inputs, which, you know, one, that's possibly one of the things that I didn't actually like about it. I was trying to keep it as compact as possible. But I kind of don't like having switch inputs but continuous. And I don't mind buttons and things like that. Like that. But uh, the switch inputs on microcontroller pins on the basis that it's unlikely that the software would rewrite the tri-state register. It could theoretically, that could happen and uh, the output, the input pin could be reassigned as an output and then it would be seeing a dead short circuit and could damage the chip. But um, I'm not sure how viable that is uh, once the software is written that to have the tri-state registers corrupted. It certainly couldn't easily happen in the software unless you were changing the state of other pins, but um, that certainly wasn't doing that in this design. The outputs for the relays, uh, there's two resistors feeding two uh, transistors, which then switch the relays and these little red indicator lights, and there's little reverse EMF protection diodes on the relay coils and a couple of resistors for the LEDs. Um, I'm guessing that connector there was probably the output to the speaker from the amplifier. And is this an input or an output? Phono level? Not 100% sure. I think that might be an input for actually recording the sounds into the unit in the first place. So very interesting. It probably took quite a time to design this, but um, I don't think there was going to be that much of a market for them, um, certainly here in Scotland. So um, it, it was fun to design, but ultimately it just didn't go, go ahead. But uh, it's an interesting little blast from the past.